Arena Breakout is extremely fun when you know what you're doing. So here are a bunch of tips and tricks to help you become pro fast. Set the right mentality ASAP. In Arena Breakout, everything is a risk. The moment you step into a raid, you're immediately thrown into danger. You're not safe until you extract successfully, so play smart. The first thing you need to do is put the settings button in the middle of your screen, make it small and drop the transparency low, because without this, you have no crosshair to use with hipfire. This one's for hardcore sweats. Pick a dark skin tone and black hair when creating your character. This makes you harder to see through windows from the outside. Pair this up with dark character skins coming in the future. This will help keep you in the shadows. Get to level 20 ASAP. This will help unlock items as well as features like more maps. Sometimes prices from NPCs, known as contacts, can also be cheaper than on the market. Focus on doing tasks for super fast EXP. It took me around about 8 hours as a totally inexperienced player to reach level 20. Always accept multiple tasks and do as many as you can in a single raid. Mission tasks still count if you fail a mission, unless you need to specifically extract with specific items to deliver them to your base contacts. You can buy some quest items from the market. This is basically the the quickest way to complete tasks that require you to deliver an item to a location on the map or the contacts in your base. When searching for items in the market though, make sure there are no spaces at the end or they won't show up at all. Capital letters don't matter. Always prioritize doing Evita tasks. Eventually, she will give you a 6 slot keychain that's invaluable in this game. This preset button appears at level 12, if I remember correctly. This is going to be your best friend when it comes to gearing up for a mission quickly. Tapping this opens up a window that quickly allows you to select the items you can bring into raids. So yeah, rush your levels. Start training your aim for headshots. This is the quickest way to kill someone, which means also the cheapest way as you'd use less bullets. Practice tap shooting. Arena Breakout isn't a type of game where you can spray and pray. I mean, you can, but it's going to cost you a lot of money if you keep doing that. This also helps you control the gun very easily. But look, the TTK can be super fast in this game, so like I said, you don't need to spray and pray in this game at all. This is an extraction shooter game. It means you need to go to one of these spots every single time to bring back anything to your base. If you die, disconnect, or don't extract before the timer runs out, you will lose absolutely everything. Well, almost everything. You keep your melee weapon, keys that are in your keychain, and the next bit. Safety boxes. These are special containers that have a separate storage area in your character window. This box in itself, as well as items stored in the box, will always be kept in this box even if you fail to extract or you die. When playing in a team, if you die and any of your teammates pick up your items like your gun, if they extract with it successfully, that item gets automatically sent to your mailbox. Alright, map tips. Farmland is the smallest map in the game. This map allows you to run around with only a short range weapon like an SMG or a shotgun. There are bots placed on high ground in some places though, but most of the time, SMGs can reach any enemies. Valley, on the other hand, is bigger than farmland. Here, there are a number of places where you can even snipe from a far distance. I wouldn't suggest only bringing an SMG in this map. Bring at least an assault rifle to deal decent damage to someone that's far away. Before we cover Northridge map, here's a quick damage tip. There's a thing called damage fall off in Arena Breakout, which means the farther your target is, is the lower damage you deal. That's why SMGs aren't best long range. Because even if you can accurately hit your shots, your damage per bullet will be low. Lastly, Northridge map. This is the third relatively quickly map you can go into. This map is huge. This place is a completely different world. I wouldn't even bother bringing an SMG into this place. Snipers would be your best bet here and assault rifles. With that in mind, be careful when running out in the open. You might just suddenly get your head blown off. That's it for the maps for now. I'll cover the rest in another video as they're way more advanced. Moving on. Subscribe because I'll be dropping more in-depth guides that will explain things in more details like best gun builds, how to play in different maps, bet loot spots, etc, etc. Also, turn your notification on when you subscribe so you get a note when I drop these videos. And drop a like because my dog is cute. Anyway, moving on. You can sell multiple items in one go by going to your contact Dick Vincent. When you're in a shop, click the sell button at the top, then sell everything here all at once. Buying items from contacts is kinda like crafting. If you have these materials, you can exchange them for this item. If you don't have them, this button allows you to buy them straight from the market and exchange them for the item. 
In Arena Breakout, bullets are somewhat more important than weapons. If you can actually control a cheap weapon build, it's better to invest in buying high tier ammo like tier 3 and above than spending tens of thousands on attachments. Higher tier ammo will help penetrate armor quicker, allowing you to kill enemies quicker. This could also end up being cheaper because you'll use less bullets and you might not need to heal because the enemy is dead instantly and they don't even have a chance to shoot back. This next one is a very risky strat, but Running with your melee out instead of a gun drains stamina slower. I wouldn't suggest doing this all the time as switching weapons take so long in this game. This is risky business, but it does help in certain situations. With that being said, weight affects speed. Running with a sniper will drain your stamina quicker than when you're running with an SMG. Roll up bags and rigs to save space in your storage. You can also roll them up if you want to steal them from other players or bots that you kill in raids and stick them in your backpack. Take every key that you find and bring them with you in every raid. Sometimes you just happen to find a door that's locked. Even if you're not looking for it, you'll just randomly find them and they'll often have good loot to bring back and sell. Don't claim items from Battle Pass straight away, market or mail. Keep them in there to save some space. Just don't forget items in your mail because they'll disappear when they expire. This link button pulls up every item in the market that's to do with that specific item. For example, if you want to find magazine types for your weapon, just click on your weapon, click link and go to the magazines to see what magazines you can equip for that gun. Dismantle a gun first, then sell each part in the market to earn more money. Prioritize selling vital parts of a weapon if you want a quicker sell as people are always crafting guns. There are 6 items you need to bring to every raid without fail. Health med kits to heal your base HP, but they use hydration every second you're using it. Bandages to fix bleeding status. Painkillers to ignore pain, I'll explain this more in a minute. Surgical kits to fix destroyed body parts, aka broken bones water to avoid dying from thirst and energy drinks to avoid dying from hunger. The health system in this game is complex as hell. There are many ways to die in Arena Breakout. Here's how to minimize your chances of dying by using these 5 items I just spoke about. This is the number one habit you need to build ASAP. Always use painkillers before entering a fight or a dangerous area. Pain is the biggest pain in the ass in Arena Breakout. Pain causes a lot of trouble if you don't deal with it properly. For example, if you're aiming down your weapon and you get shot in the arm and that arm breaks, you will automatically lower your weapon because of the pain. Obviously a major issue in the middle of a gunfight. Another example is if you're running or sprinting and you get shot in the legs and one of them breaks, you won't be able to sprint anymore, which will turn you into a sitting duck. To avoid any pain related punishment, take painkillers before you get in sticky situations. While under the influence of painkillers, also known as sedative status, you won't ever experience any of these problems. You'll still be able to sprint with two broken legs. However, sprinting for too long with a broken leg will kill you. Just because you can't feel the pain doesn't mean the damage isn't there. Bleeding. If you get shot and start bleeding, this icon will pop up. Regardless of what's happening, always fix bleed first as bleeding will make you lose health over time until you fix it. So you can basically die while using a surgical kit trying to fix a broken bone. Destroyed body parts, aka broken bones. Destroyed body parts affect you massively if left untreated. I've already told you how you can die with broken legs, but to give you another example, if you have broken arms and you're not in sedative status from painkillers, carrying out tasks like reloading will take way longer than normal. Thirst or hydration. Using medkits to heal or sprinting are some of the ways to drop your hydration levels. When your hydration level gets low, you become thirsty. When you become thirsty, your vision becomes blurry and you can even die. Energy, aka hunger. Again, sprinting also affects this status. Weight also affects this. So if your backpack is full of items and you're overweight, you consume stamina quicker, meaning you cannot sprint for long. Oh, and you can die from hunger too. Eat. Here's normally what I take for a budget survival build. Three of these healing kit for my base HP. It's cheap and heals nice. It also doesn't use much hydration per second. I just loot more from the map if I need more. Two packs of field bandages or one OPM bandage if I have a bit more money. Four simple surgical packs or one standard surgical kit. This standard kit is cheaper from Evita but can only be bought at level 20. More expensive but only takes two slots with four uses. And lastly, this Hoon Yang drink from the market. This thing is awesome. It only takes one slot and gives good amount of hydration and energy fix. 
I take one for farm, two for valley, two to three for north ridge. Always check health page before doing raids. You don't heal instantly when you extract back to your base. Healing applies over time in your base, or you can use these healing items to fix whatever you need. Carry at least one small grenade and use it every time you extract. This helps minimize the chances of you getting sniped by extraction point campers. Be careful though. These campers can still either get lucky with a snipe or throw a grenade that you won't be able to dodge at all. With that being said, be super careful and check everywhere when running towards extraction points. Check bushes, hills, watchtowers, behind vehicles. Check everywhere. Plan your stamina levels. I don't normally go into danger zones unless I have a full bar of stamina. This allows me to push and sprint to escape if I need to. Likewise, I stop a little far from the extraction point, hide and get my stamina full. So if I get attacked by an extract camper, I'll have some stamina to reposition with. Memorize bot locations. This will not only help you avoid getting shot at and damaged, it will also help you stay undetected by nearby enemies. Sometimes it's best to not kill all bots outside an area you're trying to loot. So basically when you're looting and they start shooting, that's your free alarm to say that there are enemies is nearby all right next i won't go through the whole gunsmith system here i have a separate guide for that subscribe but if you ever want to edit a weapon you already have put it in your storage tap on it click gunsmith edit away and save that build backpack slots explanation some bags have different design slots that's unique for that bag and these slots are usable based on the pocket system for example these two side pockets are these two side pockets you can't put a gun in this pocket because it doesn't have enough space you can put a bottle of water in there though and this works exactly the same with rigs you can pick up a rig put it in your backpack and put stuff inside it some of the higher tier ones use less space in your storage but they themselves have more storage inside that you can use while they're inside your bag always use a silencer Silencer or suppressors minimize the sound of your gun makes when shooting. Now, this might be obvious when it comes to enemy players hearing it, but if bots hear it too, they'll run straight to you, putting you in a terrible situation. And if you're unlucky, more bots will spawn near you and run to you as well. With that in mind, always take advantage of someone else's terrible situation. Here are two examples of that. Third party is king. In any competitive environment, Third partying will always be king. Use this time to take out enemies without being seen. Try to figure out who's winning and kill them instead first. So when you're done with them, the remaining enemies are weak and easy to take out. Secondly, when you're super low on health and need to run away, as soon as you hear chaos, run. Everyone's going to be so busy trying to kill each other and you'll just be a little mouse running away. Still be careful though, you're only less likely to be killed. This doesn't turn you invisible or immortal. If you can hear it, enemies can hear it. Healing, drinking, bush noises, if you can hear it, enemies can hear it. ABM, always be moving. Shoot, kill, reposition, heal, repeat. Arena breakout is a marathon, not a sprint. It's all about playing smart. You can make your enemies run out of supplies by simply moving around and teasing them. When they run out of supplies, they're free food. Prone when looting. Even when you have to loot out in the open, prone. At a glance, enemies might mistake you as someone who's already dead, at least the lower tier players anyway. But that still minimizes the chances of you getting killed in general, so take it. Any level of bullet can one-shot you in the face or the ear. Yup, including the crappy tier 1 bullets. Buy a helmet with a face guard. Get this helmet, go to this tab and buy this mask. It's cheap and it prevents you from getting one shot in the face. Once you bought the helmet, drag the mask onto it to install it. On that note, helmets have a mini gunsmith. Some of them will allow you to equip tactical items like a face mask or a night vision goggle. And on your hood, this button allows you to toggle on or off tactical items on your helmet. Don't get too close to a wall or an enemy. You'll fold your weapon into your chest which means you'll shoot sideways. With that in mind, you can actually use this mechanic to your favor. Run up to an enemy and hug them. They won't be able to shoot you at all. Perfect when you have a melee weapon out. Just run up to them and start slashing. They won't be able to do anything at all. Always try to keep spare magazines full. Build this habit early. Get into a safe spot and refill your mags frequently. So you'll always be maxed out on bullets every fight. Make sure that you keep your mags in your rig for a quick reload. If your mag is in your backpack, you won't reload to it. Make sure you have one free space in your rig for that mag that you're swapping from. Otherwise, your character will either put that mag into your backpack or drop it on the floor if your backpack is full, which you can end up forgetting to pick up. When you're in your base, always remember to go into your storage, open items and weapons 
weapons and examine items within those items to unlock them. Unlocking items allows you to craft or buy them later on. Likewise, this is a quick way to edit attachments on your weapon like scopes or magazines. Shoot through doors if you think someone's behind there. Wallbang works wonders in his game. Don't just run straight through doors. Open, take cover, peek. Don't try and take over behind the door though, you can get wall banged yourself. If you want to make the most money when you raid, only carry one weapon. So you can pick up another primary weapon and a secondary weapon to bring back and sell or keep without using any backpack space. Play on balanced graphics, it's generally brighter. It's also light on your device so you can push your FPS setting higher. If you're broke, quickly do covert raids. Not only do you get free stuff from the start, you can also run around the map just scavenging for items or the players left behind because they're full. Get used to using throwables ASAP. These are absolutely crazy useful in boss fights or flushing out campers. With that in mind, grenades aren't just for killing. If they explode near a player, they can damage their hearing, allowing you to push without being heard. Be careful though, these footstep sound indicators will still come up. If you're a gaming demon and just naturally good at killing and surviving, do all of your tasks in rank mode. You don't really get bonus EXP from the task itself, but every kill on every successful raid is rewarded higher when you're in rank mode. Remember this, less weight, faster movement. Also less weight, less stamina consumption when sprinting. 